Hi, uh, welcome. Um, in this video, um, I just wanted to give uh, a few thoughts about uh, hashing and dictionaries. Um, so, starting with the concept of dictionaries here. Um, so, actually start with um, talking a little bit about what we mean by keys and comparable objects. Um, so, normally when we store data in a computing system, uh, th th there's usually something that identifies, like a, a unique identifier, um, or we can also call it a key, um, that, that's our primary way of searching for the item, right? So, so most things, uh, lots of things, so one, one problem can be that lots of things have more than one natural way that you might want to uh, search for it. So they might have more, multiple keys, right? In which case you might need multiple indexes, uh, um, uh, into the um, <clears throat> to the items, right? Um, but anyway, so, so let's just think about having like a single search key, right? So, you know, you, your unique ID or unique key, I mean, it could be like a string, could be the person's name. Um, so in databases, it's more often something like a unique identifier of some kind. So people have used like social security numbers in the past, um, but that's kind of gone out of, out of favor nowadays for security reasons. Um, so, but, 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 but things like that, right? So, so keys can be numbers, but they can be other things. They can be more complex. Uh, one, of the, one of the big things about this is that keys need to be comparable. Um, so at a minimum, if we, need to, if we want to be able to search by a key, we need to have some way to, to tell if two keys are equal or not, right? Um, but if we want to implement some sort of a storage where the where there's some order to the storage, the keys not have have to be not only um, you know that you can tell whether they're equal or not, but they also have to have some sort of order, right? So you need to be able to to tell whether one search key is less than another key or greater than, right? So that's in general what we kind of mean by comparable, all right? Um, so on dictionaries, dictionaries are really just an abstract data type, so they're an abstraction where um, we associate a key, um, and the key can be some kind of art, arbitrary object, you know, string or whatever, integer, um, a unique ID. So we want to associate a key that we can search on with a, a value, okay? So typically, we're associating the key with like a record, you know, so it might be like a structure or a class. Um, or like in databases, it's it's uh, like a row in the database. Um, you know, it's, it's a it's a record in the database, basically. So then the the abstraction. So there, there's a few more functions than this, but um, if you look in the uh, the Schaefer textbook, uh, chapter four, our readings for this um, section here. Uh, so some of the main functions for the the API or the interface for dictionaries is you want to be able to insert. Um, a value, and insert usually takes a key and then a value, right? And, and, and it's going to associate that key with that value uh, in the dictionary. And then you normally want to search, be able to search and, and remove items. So, so both of those would take a particular key, and you would find it um, by the key and return the item if you find it. And you would call remove by the key, and you would remove the item if you find it, okay? So uh, just a few quick kind of issues with dictionaries. Um, so one of the things our textbook talks a little bit about is, is it's a little bit inefficient to have a copy of, of the key uh, in the record um, and then separately in, in your dictionary, right? So some um, implementations of, of dictionaries, um, um, uh, these are also known, I should have mentioned, you know, there's a couple of different names for this concept. So these are also known as key value pairs, uh, dictionaries, um, uh, maps. So, so these are often called maps. Um, I think in the standard template library we call these maps, right? Um, so anyway, it's a little bit inefficient to have kind of a copy of the key value. So, so some systems that implement dictionaries do some special things with keys. So you might define that an objects objects that can be stored in dictionaries have to have, you know, that they have to have a special method or they have to conform to um, um, uh, an API so that you can ask them for what their key value is. Um, but that can be troublesome because then, like I already said, you know, lots of kinds of objects you might want to be able to store by more than one key. 
So then, you know, um, uh, if, if you force it by the API to have just one function that, that returns the key for the object, then you're kind of stuck. You can only, you can only index it um, by one item. Um, another thing I'll show here uh, real quickly is that... Um, so a dictionary is really just an API. So there's, there's a lot of different ways you could actually uh, implement a dictionary, right? Um, I mean, you could just implement a dictionary as, as like an array, or actually like as an, a pair of an arrays. So you might have one array that has the key, and then at the, the same location uh, where you store the key, um, then you have another array that holds the values, right? So then you would search the array for the key, um, and then when you find that index, that would tell you the, the index and the value um, so you could return it, okay? But, uh, yeah, I mean, using an array would be pretty inefficient for that, so it would be uh, or order big O in to find and remove items. So you'd have to do a linear search on the array um, for, for the find function to, to, to look for the item that you're looking for. Um, likewise for remove. Um, and if, if you use an array, arrays are fixed size once you allocate them. So if you fill up your array, um, um, you'd then have to grow the array somehow if, if you want to be able to, to add more items to your dictionary, right? We could use a linked list. Um, that, that would avoid the growing part, right? So, so that, that would fix one of those things. But a linked list would still be big O of N whenever you wanted to insert a new item into your dictionary um, or find an item, right? Um, but we could do much better in terms of like search, right? So we already looked at, uh, for example, um, um, if we could keep our array sorted when, when we insert the item in there, we could do a binary search. So then our search would be much faster. It would be O login, right? Um, but keeping the array sorted would cause us, um, our insertions would still have to be um, O in, right? So, so we would have to... Um, Um, uh, d d d do some extra work to keep the, the array sorted. The, the reason why it's O is it's not O in because uh, because it takes uh, O in time to find where to insert the item. But the, but the problem is once you want to insert the item, if it's an array, you're going to have to shift all the so you have to, to to make some room, shift a bunch of items, and that can be up to O in in the worst case, right? So another another solution we've talked about in this class, you could use a binary tree uh, to implement your dictionary. So that has lots of advantages. Um, um, the binary tree is going to allow you to do insertions in login time, and your, your searches would be login time, right? Um, so, so that's a pretty good solution. Uh, and this is kind of leading up to, though, there, there's something that can do even better. So often why we introduce dictionaries at the same time we induce, introduce hash, uh, hashing is that... Um, you can build what's known as a hashing scheme um, to be able to uh, implement uh, insertion and search in O1 time, right? So, so in uh, constant time, right? So to kind of summarize that, um, you know, if, if you use an unsorted array, um, uh, insertion is O1, so you just insert it on the end of the array, unless your array is full, then you have to grow it a bit and copy all the items from the old location to the, to the big one. So, so you have growth as kind of an issue uh, when you have like a, a, an array that you're dynamically allocating. Uh, but yeah, and you have the drawbacks that search and removal are both O-N. Uh, if you keep the array sorted, I mean, that does help with the search, so, so search becomes just login, which is good. Uh, but it makes insertion become O in because of that shifting that you might have to do, like I talked about. And, and removal also is O in, again, because you might have to shift items. And you still also have the growth problem that once the array becomes full, uh, you have to allocate some new memory and, and copy everything over, right? So l linked lists um, can uh, do insertion in constant time as well. You just put the item on the end of the list. Um, and, but but it still has the, the, the you have to search and remove takes O in the, the the big advantage from this though is that um, it, it can grow dynamically without having to worry about having to um, do one big hit right so every time you add a new item you just grow uh, ac add an, uh, a little bit extra memory to to hold that one new item right. Um, 
so binary trees is, is, is kind of pretty nice. That every, So everything, so when you insert or search or remove, it's O log. And it also doesn't have growth issues. So it grows um, for each individual item that you add or remove, right? And then, like I mentioned, though, so so this this you know hashing looks really. We'll, we'll talk about how you can do this uh, here in this video. Um, so this looks very um, um, uh, very nice because it allows you to do um, where you can insert, search, and remove in constant time, right? So, so that's better than any of these. Although it still does have the problem of growth, right? So if you're doing hashing. Um, when the hash table is full, you're gonna have to grow the hash table. Right? So, um, all right. So, so let me let me um, jump over then to uh, let's look at a few real quick uh, code examples. Um, and as usual, I'll post this code um, online with the video. Um, this is meant. I mean, this is a, a simplified version of of a dictionary um, as described like in chapter four so so of the API for a dictionary let's look at the dictionary class real quickly just mention some things so, so I, I didn't implement like everything in the abstract API that you might have read for in chapter four um, so but but in the code if you look at it for this video there is a base class called dictionary so but I have an actual concrete implementation right so um, like I said I only I, in this example for this video we only implement um, um, the kind of what I think of as kind of the three basic uh, functions um, insert find and remove uh, plus also a getter function to get the size right so so again though the API for, for an abstract dictionary it's or you can also call this a key value store um, a key value container when you insert items you give it the key separately from the value here all right, so we're not doing any of those other solutions the textbook talks about of requiring the object to have some special API so you can uh, um, so you can query it directly to find out what its key should be. Right? So so anyway, you insert by giving a key to value, and your key your your dictionary then should should um, maintain you know the item so that you can find you can ask to find a particular key and it will return the value if it finds it. Or you can ask to remove a particular value uh, that, that's indexed by that key, and then remove it. All right. So in this example code here, I use basically just a flat array, and I also didn't worry about growing it. Right. So, um, so, so there's um, a class called a dictionary, which is a concrete implementation of our dictionary uh, virtual class base base class here. Right. So here we basically, like I mentioned, we, we do this as just two parallel arrays of keys and values. Um, and so, like real quickly, if we look at insert, um, uh, you keep track of um, the um, where's insert? There it is uh, of, of what the current size of the dictionary. Is. So so insertion is just an O1 operation. Um, although in this case we're not checking if the if the arrays have become full, so we're not handling that case where you have to grow it um, if you've run out of space. But but here it's it's constant time because you just tack it onto the end of the array. Both the, the key goes into the end of the keys array, and the value goes into the end of the values array. And then you know, we increase the the number of items by one. Right? Uh, and then to do both um, a find and a remove, we do a linear search. So you, you create. Um, uh, a loop that goes through, and, and, and you try and find the key. And and also, uh, I'll caution you. I'm, I'm not really handling the cases like when you when you don't find the item the way you really should here. So, so in, in this real quick code I put together, we just kind of print an error message and we throw uh, we return just an empty value, right? Um, and kind of same thing. So for remove, um, um, we just throw an error message if we can't find the item. But both of these are basically doing um, um, a, a linear search, right? Since we're keeping it in a dictionary that's unordered, right? But again, like I said, you could implement your key value pair using any of the other methods that I talked about, including hashing that we'll talk about uh, later here. But we could have put a binary tree behind the behind here to. Um, uh, keep the collection um, and and so on. Right? Um, all right. So let's just look at some quick examples. Of, so um, well, uh, so the way you normally use a key value pair or a dictionary. Um, so, so you define it. So like in in C plus uh, plus, 
what we do is we use templates. So that, that class was templatized, like I talked about. So we, we specify that we want a dictionary. So we want one of the array-based dictionaries here, the, the, the concrete implementation of a dictionary. The, the keys are going to be of type string for this first example, and the values are of type float. Okay? So that just means that when I insert an item, I give it a, a key of um, a string type, and, and then the, the value that's associated with that is a floating point number. All right? Um, oh, that reminds me. There's one thing I, I, meant, I meant to mention. Um, so, um, really, a, a, a dictionary, um, if you think about it, an array, just a regular array in C and in most languages, is a type of key value um, storage. But the, the thing about regular arrays is that the keys have to be of a particular type. So the only, only thing you can use to index into arrays um, is, an, is, is actually an unsigned integer. So an integer in C that's either 0, 1, 2, 3, a whole value number, right? But that, that, that's really what an array is. It, it's, it's an association of a key, an integer in this case, with a value. And so so the, the value in the array is whatever type is that the array is, is storing, right? So the thing about uh, the, the dictionary class or the key value um, storage class um, is that the indexing item becomes an arbitrary item, right? But but it, it's it's a mapping like an array just from your key to your value, right? So when we have strings for the keys and float for the values, we insert strings, uh, for, we insert like floating point values and associate it with with a string key, right? Um, and actually, I don't think I'm going to actually run this this code here. So, so um, well, maybe I will. Um, um, we'll run it and show it for for all these here at once. Um, but yeah, so I can I can associate I can add as many items as I want. Although again, in this case, the, the example code um, isn't checking for when the arrays get full. So, so bad things would happen if we inserted too many items. But but uh, yeah, we can add some additional keys, um, and and then we can search for any of those keys, um, and we can re remove a key then from the storage. Um, so one thing. I didn't talk about, um, or I didn't show, so so not only for, for the array-based do you have to do a linear search for the removal, um, but um, once you find the location, I mean, there would be kind of two options. One, you could use some kind of like a tombstone value, so you could just put a special value in there to, to represent that, that this item is no longer valid. So the next time when you do an insertion, instead of just inserting on the end, you might keep a list of those where those tombstone values are or you might make it into a linear search but the other common thing is is you have to do shifting like I talked about so, so the implementation that I gave you when you remove an item we shift all the items down to fill in that hole so that insertion can still be um, constant times so and we just insert on the end right? so, so that's what we're doing here for this um, a dictionary this array based dictionary right? So since this is a, a C++ template class, you know, we could create another dictionary, but using, in this case, we use integers for the um, index, um, and we use an employee record, so this employee is in this file. It's just a very simple class with, um, like, three attributes, an employee ID, a name, and a salary. This is kind of what I meant by a duplicate here. So in this case, we're going to use the unique employee ID as the key, but, but we're keeping that also as a record um, or as a field in our employee records as well, right? So if you look here, if we, if we create, uh, if we insert, uh, so, so I create uh, like an employee E1 with an employee ID of 123123, 1, 2, 3, but then I insert it into the dictionary um, with that as the key, and then this employee record is the value, right? And we insert some more, right? Um, and, and we can search. So, so again, now when we're searching, we, we, we want to pass in uh, the integer, in this case the employee ID that we want to search for and, and find it. Right? So if we run that, um, you know, you should see, for just skipping down to the dictionary example, um, if we search for the employee 8777, it finds that employee and returns it back. And if we search for the employee 123123, 1, 2, it finds that and returns it back. Right? Um, okay, so that's the basics of a dictionary. Um, or, uh, yeah, the dictionary type or the um, 
the the um, key value uh, container um, abstract data type, right? So um, let me talk about hashing then a little bit. All right. So hashing um, the, the, again, the reason why we often talk about it with dictionaries is because what we normally want to do in hashing is we want to associate a, a, an arbitrary key with a value again. So it's a key value uh, idea. Um, so the, 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 the breakthrough concept, so, so we want to do, be able to do a direct access by, uh, by searching for a key. So, uh, yeah, this, this is kind of what I had said there. So uh, an array is, is a hash, but the, the key has to be an index. But the nice thing about you know, arrays in a computing system is they allow for random access. So what I mean by direct access, they allow for random access. So it takes constant time if you have the, the index, the integer index, to find any value in memory it takes the same amount of time. Um, you just uh, use that index um, and the basically the integrated circuits on the hardware level uh, can do that in constant time, oh, one time. It, it, it takes no different amount of time to find a value in memory at, at the start of memory than it does at the end of memory, right? They all take constant time or random access. So, so how can you do that, though, with, with keys that are other things than integers? And that's the whole kind of thing about what hashing is. So really, hashing comes down to the hash function. Okay, so is it possible to write a function that will map uh, an arbitrary search key, like a, a string um, or, um, or or whatever, to an integer index that we can then use to index into a random access memory array, like, like we do when we use regular arrays in C, right? Um, so, and, I mean, it, it, and it is possible. So you can write those kinds of functions. Those are known as hash functions. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, because it comes down to, I mean, all data is ultimately bits. It, it ultimately is numeric. When you get down to it and, and look in, in to what's happening in the computer, in, in its memory, thus we can always convert any kind of... of key, whether it's a string, uh, a character, a floating point number, um, a boolean, whatever, we can always convert that to, to like a bit value representation, for example, um, and then create a function that maps that, that um, pattern of bits to an integer in a range of values. And then so once you do that mapping, then um, you can use the properties of a of computing systems to you know use memory to, to do a random access and get O1 access time. Okay, so that that's what is so so if you've got the hash function, uh, that that's why you have O1 insertion and O1 uh, find, right? So so you hash it, you have an integer, and then you're going to be using the properties of computing computer memory to do a random access and find the value, with some caveats here, right? So for one. Um, it gets a little bit complex because, you know, the hash function is ma is making kind of an arbitrary mapping from your key to an integer. So some hash functions can be really bad. They can, they can map um, all your keys to the same value or to, to a small set of values, right? So the ideal hash function dist randomly distributes the, the, the mapping of the keys over the, the range of the hash table, okay? So what, what we mean by that, it's, it would be ideal if that for every key it mapped exactly to one value in the hash table, right? But uh, that's not um, possible. Uh, for one thing, usually the, 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 the range of the keys is going to be much, much bigger than the size that you want to keep for your hash table. So it's going to be impossible for, in theory, to have every key mapped to a unique hash table value. So what you want to do to have a good hash function is that it's equally likely to be um, um, mapped to, to any given slot uh, in the hash table. Okay? So, um, in practice, I mean, it, actually, in theory, uh, just one hash function ought to work for any kind of given key. But in practice, um, 
um, you, you do want to have different kinds of hash functions for different kinds of keys. So in, in particular, things that are like integers or numeric data like floating point numbers, yeah, really just the, the bit patterns. You know, So if you have a 64-bit float, you can just treat it as a bit pattern or a 64-bit integer. But if you have a string of, of characters, the, the, the string is arbitrarily long. So you usually want to do something slightly different. So in practice, for, for string values, you, you need to sum up um, the like the ASCII values of each individual character um, to come up with like a 64-bit sum of the values, and then you use that um, to do your hashing with. Okay. Um, so, so a good hash function is going to be one that 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 maps the the keys equally likely across whatever the size of the hash table you want to keep. But um, you can never, you know, completely minimize the, the fact that you're going to have some hash keys that map to the same index, all right? So that means you have to have what's known as collision resolution when you, when you implement a hashing scheme. So there's two main parts, uh, to, uh, two main types of, of hashing resolution. You can use open hashing or closed hashing, all right? Um, so open hashing um, is... is is relatively the, the simplest, um, and that's not the one that we did for the assignment 13 I asked you to do this week. So basically the idea is is you have each bucket actually be, become the head of a linked list, all right? So if you do have a collision, then you just add on to the linked list, right? So again, as long as your hash, hash function is, is, is pretty good, uh, you'll, your collisions will be minimized, so then your linked list will be really small. Um, that, that you might have to, to search um, in order to add an item onto the end of it or whatever, or, or search um, if you've got multiple items that ended up colliding and being at the same bucket, right? So open hashing has, has the, 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 um, the virtue of being relatively simple, right? Um, but, um, um, yeah, it does, you know, so, so you have to combine kind of an array with then linked lists um, on these things. So closed hashing, you basically use some sort of what's known as a probing scheme. Um, so, um, and, and there's a couple of different flavors. Um, so one is a bucket kind of scheme. So the idea on this is that each hash uh, key maps to not a single slot in the hash table, but multiple slots uh, called buckets. Um, and, and again, so this kind of like like a, a, a linked list, but of fixed size, right? So if you do have collisions, you just fill up those slots in a bucket. Um, but then if the bucket becomes full, then then you kind of have problems. So you have to have do some special things with like overflow buckets or something like that, right? So again, um, I mean, of course, you should read about that. Um, our, our assignment, though, actually uses linear probing. Uh, probing. Um, so if a collision is detected, uh, we generate what's known as a probe sequence. Um, so the simplest idea is, is you just start doing a, a, a linear probe. So if you if your hash key mapped to index five, but five, you know, and you're trying to do an insertion, and five is uh, index five is already um, occupied. Then you just probe the next one, so see if index six is um, available or not. And if that one's not available, you go to the next one. Right. So again, for the for all of these, um, you know, um, when when you do insertion, you have to do some sort of collision relation uh, resolution. But when you do like search and removal, you have to keep that in mind as well. So for example, for linear probing, if I want to do a search. Uh, you have to keep in mind the fact that, that the first item that I look for in my search, the, the first the hash location, uh, there might have been a collision, so that might not be the actual item that I'm searching for. So then I have to do the, 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 the same process. Um, um, I have to linearly probe or linear, linear search um, until I either find my item or uh, I get to a location that's empty, which indicates that maybe the search was failed. And the the item that you were asked to search for uh, wasn't actually in the, the the hash table or the key value uh, storage. So, all right. So um, anyway, in in all these methods, collisions have to be dealt with um, on insertion, and they also have to be dealt with when searching um, and removal. Um, 
and, and in particular deletions, I didn't mention this yet, but, but deletions can be a problem on closed hashing because if you remove an item, now you might have had the, the, the thing that some items were inserted after that in, in like a probe sequence. So if I just remove that item, um, it might look like, if I search for that items that were after that in the probe sequence, um, it might look like they're not there when they really are. So you have to do something when you remove an item to indicate, oh, well, um, if anything um, it was after this in the probe sequence, um, keep searching. You know, don't don't stop here. So you use special values um, like called tombstones um, uh, to indicate that, that that these aren't. So so if 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 you want to insert an item, you can remove a tombstone and insert it into an empty space. So you can treat it as empty for insertion. But when you're searching, um, you have to treat tombstones as if there might be still. Uh, the item I'm searching for in the next sequence um, that I'm look, looking for in, in there. Um, all right, and and then just just to mention then, so for your assignment, I ask you to do a variation of of probing called quadratic per probing. So for linear probing, um, th there's more than than just probing the the next you know you know adding one. So you could have done linear probing by checking every second or every third value or something like that. Qu in quadratic probe probing, you have a, um, a function that tells you um, how many, you know, how far you should add, go, f for the next um, index to look at when I'm doing an insertion or a search, or, or, or um, a sort, a, a search, All right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, to do that, then you end up having two functions. You have your original hash function, but then you have your probe function. Um, that will return uh, what to add to the, to, to the base uh, hash address uh, for a probe sequence. So. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's basically it uh, for this video. And so that was relatively short, but um, those are kind of the basics of, of hashing dictionaries. So I think. Kind of to summarize, I mean, the most important thing is just to understand that so the dictionary or the key value storage is an abstract kind of concept, right? So there's many ways you could you could implement behind the scenes a container that maps an arbitrary key to a value, right? So and then the the, the thing about hashing then it, it's it's a new technique that, that we haven't looked at yet in this class for uh, allowing for searching um, and inserting um, um, items in a storage. Um, and, and the big thing about hashing is it, it, it uses the properties of computer memory to, in theory, allow for uh, constant time insertion and constant time searching and removal of items, right? With some drawbacks, uh, some some caveats, you know. So we did. I didn't really talk about you know the the, the, the hash table can become full, so you would have to grow it uh, the same as as for array based implementations I talked about. Um, but and there's also the complexities that we discussed a little bit about having to deal with collisions and things like that. So it's 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 constant time, but um, 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 you know there, there's additional steps um, um, that and, and some additional searching that, that might have to happen. But still, in general, as long as your hash function is working well, relatively well, um, and is distributing the mapping over the whole hash table. Uh, any collisions um, will be kept relatively short, right? So, so whether you, you're using um, open or closed, um, uh, your probe sequence won't get too big. Um, so, so you might have to probe two or three or four times, but but still, you know, in items collections of millions of items, that, that's still constant time basically to, to access the items. Um, all right, so that's it for this video. Um, um, I hope those were useful for you working on your assignment for this week. Um, and um, I will talk to you again.